G'day guys. Today we're going to talk about the Anglo-Saxon Huskarl. Okay, um, the Anglo-Saxon Huskarls were essentially immortalized on the Bayou Tapestry. These are the guys who are running around waving a two-handed battle axe, otherwise known as a Dane axe or a Great Axe. number of these have been found and uh, we'll, we'll please refer to this video just up here and I'll talk about that a little bit more specifically. The etymology of the word huskal, hus means house and then kal can actually be broken down into several different words and have several different meanings so there's a little bit of debate around exactly what it meant. Essentially however a huskal was a professional retainer they were a reformation of the Anglo-Saxon warrior class by Sven Forkbeard, but we don't know whether this was a professional full-time body of warriors or whether there was a degree of mercenaries or if you like casual warriors in the class as well. Under Canute the Great, the Huskarls were governed by a law called the Withlow which is actually an Anglo-Saxon canon law. So there's some differences there, but there must have been a degree of amalgamation between Anglo-Saxon and Norse warriors here. Interesting, we'll come back to that in a few minutes. They seem to have had a range of different roles within the household. They had a number of social roles and administra administrative roles, such as collecting taxes and so on. In fact, if you look at it, there's a number of very key similarities between the late Anglo-Saxon Huskarl and the Norman knight at this time. There are a number of different sources which do seem to conflict with themselves around the size and nature of the Huskarls. Unfortunately, this seems to create uh, a, a bit of animosity. Mm, wrong word. Um, a, a bit of conflict between some historians. What we do know is that King Canute seemed to have had somewhere between three and four thousand Huskarls. A lot of historians balk at that idea and question why Canute would have needed such a massive force of uh, retainers um, essentially as a standing army because Canute didn't at the time really invade anywhere as such. As far as dress goes, we know that they all basically wore a chainmail hauberk. It probably had an integrated coif. They probably wore a nasal helmet. On a belt, there would have been most likely an axe, a sword, and a sayax, depending on uh, how the individual warrior fought. Most of them would have used a, a kite shield. The axes that we know that they used may have been single or two-handed axes, but you can see by the shape and size of this that uh, these axes were clearly designed for um, these axes were clearly designed for battle. We don't know how the uh, Huskarls were employed in terms of battle tactics. Uh, and that's a real shame. That's something that's just been lost to history or we haven't found it yet. After 1066, we know that many of the Huskarls dispersed into the Anglo-Saxon society and many of them were involved in a number of the different uprisings against uh, William the Conqueror. Obviously, all of these uprisings failed 
although this, some of them seem to have lasted for a period of time, the survivors seem to have then basically uh, disappeared across to the Byzantine Empire and joined the Varangian Guard. So the Varangian Guard would then have comprised of some, a, a large portion of Anglo-Saxon Husqvarls. It's quite interesting because the, Anglo, uh, the Varangian Guard up to that point had been predominantly uh, Viking, if you like, comprising of mostly Rusk and uh, Scandinavian Vikings. So the former conflicts between these two groups uh, would have made a very interesting organisation. However, they seem to have worked very well together and ironically, um, some of the very same Huskars that fought the Normans at Hastings then went on to fight the Normans again uh, in another battle under the Byzantine Empire, but that's a video for a different day. Right now guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video and today's introduction to the Huskars. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.